Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos and the countdown to Photo Raw 2024 continues. Today, we're gonna edit a photo of a duck, but if you wanna pick up a copy of All On Photo Raw and support the channel at the same time, consider using my coupon code, FreeWillPhotos20. It is an affiliate coupon. I get a small commission, but no extra cost to you. You save some money, I make a little, and it all works out. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer take a look at today's edit. Here we are inside of Photo Raw 2023. And one of the things that I think we can do to this photo is get rid of this duck over here on the left hand side. So whenever I work with the retouching tool, especially the perfect eraser, I like to duplicate my layer. You can do that by clicking this double layer icon and that's going to give you a second layer. That just means if I mess something up, I have a layer to come back to because the perfect eraser is a destructive tool. Now I'm going to come over here and click on retouch. You could also get here by hitting shift and Q, but I'm just going to click on it today. And I'm going to make my brush size a little bit larger because I already have the perfect eraser selected. And the only option you get here is really choosing the size. Using the keyboard shortcuts, the left and right brackets, that's what builds your brush size smaller or larger. I'm just going to go ahead and click over this duck and erase as much of him as I possibly can. And I'm leaving the reflection because usually when I use the perfect eraser, I work in two steps if there's a reflection. Uh, but sometimes on one will think that you want something that's lower down there. I'm okay with that for now because I'm just going to continue erasing here. All right. And this is a great tool. If the area you're working in doesn't have that much detail and you don't need that much detail to go back into it, use, consider using a perfect eraser. Now I will mention this is a destructive tool. What that means is whenever you use this tool, it usually is unreversible. And that's the reason why I create the second layer here. So I'm gonna turn this off and turn it back on. You can see what it did. I like what it did. There are a few streaks here and you could fix those things later on, but for the sake of not making this a very long video, I'm just gonna leave it as is and say that I got what I wanted to get. Now, there is a small feather here. Let me zoom in for you. There's a feather right by his foot. I don't think anyone would have caught that. And in fact, I didn't catch it the first time that I was doing this uh, tutorial or practicing for it. But nonetheless, I'll get rid of it. So that way I know that I have a more clean workspace. I don't quite like what it's doing here next to the rock. So let me just try and get rid of that. It just looked a little weird. Uh, probably is perfectly fine and I'm nitpicking at this point. So I'm going to leave this alone and we're going to get into the rest of the edit. So I'm going to come over here, hit view, and then I'm going to click on effects. And the first thing that I want to do in this photo, I think is kind of make it a little bit more vibrant. Now, I could come over to develop and pull up on the vibrancy here. And this works, right? I think that this works pretty well. In fact, I'll leave it at 57 here and then just pull down just a touch because I want this to be a more golden look, all right? I want it to be a more golden look. So I'm going to go with that. I did change the camera profile on this photo to vivid. so. I did forget to mention that earlier, but now you're seeing it. I didn't change anything else over here really other than the saturation that is pulled down negative five, but that's just a basic edit for me. Your photos will probably be a little bit different. Now I'll go ahead and add in a color enhancer. I think I'll start there. And I don't really need to mess with the saturation and vibrance anymore except for the fact that I think the water is too green and it just looks weird. So what I'm actually going to do, just thought about this, I'm going to use the replace color tool. 
Sometimes I forget about this tool, but this is actually a very handy tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and click right here in the water. And you see it selects a pretty decent range of the water. If I hit the letter O, and you can't actually see that with the mask. I wish you could see it with the mask, but I digress. Uh, if I pull up on this, I'm going to select more of that green, but it looks like I got all of the green that there possibly could be in this particular image. And all I'm going to do is kind of turn this into some faux looking water. Uh, usually it's a darker type of blue. And let me just pull down on the amount because I, I do kind of want to try and mix this in. This is not coming out the way that I was hoping it would. So, you know what? We're just going to scratch the uh, idea of that. And we'll use the color enhancer because that just isn't working. And that's why I like doing these videos in real time with you so you can see the challenges I run into and then how I hopefully overcome them. Uh, I can't come overcome every single challenge, but... What I'm going to do is click on the grains, pull down on the saturation. I think I'm going to come to the yellows and also pull down on the saturation. That should get me... And then I'll probably just make the water a little bit darker. And that's helping with pulling out this backdrop. Now I'm starting to get some weird artifacting here in the background because those are also other colors. But let's say we don't know what colors those actually represent. Well, what I can do is take the eye picker tool here and I can click on one of these colors. So, and I want to adjust the saturation. So I will grab the eye picker tool, click on one of the colors. It's going to select that channel. And then you can see I can modify the saturation of that particular color. And my computer is just it's taken a lot of movement just to get that one area uh, to modify. But now I'm getting a little bit more uh, precise with what it is that I like or don't like about the overall image. Now, what I can also do is use the masking tools to only apply this to the water because that's essentially all that I really wanted to apply it to. So I'm going to hit water and you can see it's still kind of reading that there was something over in that left hand corner, uh, which is interesting, but that's just the way it goes. Sometimes AI is still learning uh, and then we'll hit paint in, go ahead and click that, let that go do its thing. And so now it's modified everything there we'll hit the letter O so we can see the mask. And then I'm just going to hit shift X to paint in this area because this is now water and I want that to get the same treatment as the rest of the water in my photo. Okay. So we'll hit the letter O and I'm okay with whatever it's doing back there. It's not water, but it's good enough for what we want to accomplish. I'll just leave it at that. And I meant to do shift X and paint in this little area. There's some areas up here at the top that needed to also be applied to that mask. So now it's time to start focusing on uh, manipulating this duck essentially. So what I'm going to do is copy this mask. I'm going to come over here to my local adjustments. I'm going to hit the mask and paste. And then we're going to invert this and then I am going to actually paint away everything here at the top as well. So let me hit the letter O because all I really care about is working with the duck and this foreground rock here, but not this rock over here. So I'm going to paint that rock away as well. That way what I'm doing in the local adjustments will not impact anything else except for the areas that I want to impact. So now what I need to do is reset the exposure here because it was a darker exposure. 
And in fact, I want to increase the exposure, pull up on the contrast, so that way the duck starts to stand out. And then we'll pull down on the blacks, and this is just going to help with defining the duck a little bit. We'll pull up on the structure a touch. And then I'm going to actually copy this mask. So we'll hit copy there, and then we'll add another adjustment. And this time we're going to paste it and invert it, so that way it's all on the background. Well, I want to kind of fade that away from the, uh, the overall background. So we'll pull up on the exposure, and I'll even pull down on the opacity, so that way it kind of looks more uh, gradual, so to speak. And then I'll even feather this off from the duck just a touch. So that way it kind of just wraps around him. Now, one of the things that I really enjoy doing in photos like this is putting a vignette, mostly because I think that it works well. So I'm going to add another adjustment, hit the letter M on my keyboard, click right here in the center, pull this right over the duck, and then pull this out so that way it kind of fades nicely into the image. And I think that this is a pretty good image. And if I wanted to, I could stop right here. However, I'm gonna go one step further and I'm gonna make this a little bit more of a stylized look because I think I got the tones, the colors, uh, everything else going the way that I wanted to. However, what I really would like to do is maybe add in a little bit of sunshine. Um, maybe pull that down just a touch. And then I'm going to add in a sun flare because, you know, on bird photos, I feel like this just works so well. Uh, it's a little large in that area. We'll maybe try a different flare. Maybe, maybe something like the light's coming from the right in this image. It's actually right behind me, but I'm going to make it directional to the right. So let's go with, if I go with this, it's going to be a little bright and orange. I like this one. All right. And then what I can do is click this transform button and I can move this around on the image overall. I think that that works out pretty well. And let's, you know what, let's play around with frames. I don't do that too often. And, you know, now that I'm looking at it, I think the duck needs a little bit of dynamic contrast on it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab dynamic contrast. And I'm going to go with surreal because I like to go crazy with it. Dial it back, invert my mask. And then go to the mask icon here, click animal and paint in, hit apply. Let that paint into the animal. I will paint this away from this area because I definitely don't need it over there. And now I can just kind of season to taste for the dynamic contrast that I want. I don't really care for a super crisp duck here. But that's just something that I've seen and said, hey, you know what? I should probably throw just a little bit of contrast, make them pop a little bit more in the scene. And in fact, I should probably come over here and feather this mask because, you know me, you got to feather your mask. That's just a thing. All right. So now what I want to do is throw a border on here because I think that'll be fun. You know, I like having fun with my overall images because why not, all right? If you get stuck in just one way of doing things, even though I do a lot of the same things, then it takes away from the creative side of just enjoying the software. We, we live in a wonderful time where we have software that we can play around with and make all kinds of stuff. Now I am looking at this photo and I kind of like it with the border. I normally go with a simple border, but wonder what happens if I go with one of these more interesting borders. So here's an emulsion border. Never used an emulsion border before on a photo to the best of my knowledge, but I kind of like this one. 
And I wonder, you know, you can colorize these borders. So I'll pull down on the color and maybe make it a little bit more similar. Uh, actually, let me click here. And I want to make it match the sun flare. So, yeah, I think that kind of works out. I don't know. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I was really just testing out some stuff because that's kind of the beauty of working inside of software like on one photo raw and that's why i'm excited to get 2024 just because i like to mess around and create things that maybe you wouldn't normally create if you got questions leave it in the comment section let me know what you think about the edit wasn't the best work that i could have done but it's something that i did and i enjoy it and i'm going to post this to my vero account so until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.